All right, so to, to kind of go over some of this stuff regarding the lab, because we ran over a little bit. I, now, I keep everything in Moodle, and I, let's see, there we go. So there's just a document there that says assignments. You can open that up. And so there's the homework that's due today. So we got uh, page 241, 4, 5, and 6, page 242, 7, and 8, that distance and azimuth handout on 149, and then the intro questions on 151. Um, and then the lab is on, that's due uh, Thursday. So that includes the distance measuring notes. Now, when you uh, turn in homework, And, and I guess more importantly, when you turn in labs, everybody has to make their own copy of the lab, okay? So that should be done on page 262 of your uh, book. So I gave you a handout, but that, that was kind of my work. I want you to make your own write-up of the lab, okay? So a sketch and a north arrow, a crew, and all that sort of thing, okay? So that goes on page 262, all right? Um, so that's one thing that I'd like for the lab. Now, there's a couple other things that I'd like also. Um, now, which crew's got the, uh, let's see how many takes on that GPS measurement that we got, because there were a couple crews that didn't do it. So crew, not yet. Did you guys get GPS on that? No, okay. How about uh, Team Werewolf? Did you guys get that done, the, the GPS, no? Okay, uh, team roundtable, roundtable crew, no go, okay. Transit crew, no, we're on a bad run here. Hammer of Thor, I bet you guys, you all got it done, right? No go, huh? Well, who did, my goodness, there are a lot of people at GPS, the Mariners, did you all get it done? That was it? I saw more than one crew walking, oh, you guys did, oh, that's right, the Masters of Kids. So we got two, just two readings on that, eh? That was it? That's not so good. Okay. So a couple readings. All right. So that just is what it is. So the, for that, you can turn it in for your whole crew. If you do, you have those with with you. The, could I get the those two uh, GPS readings while I'm thinking about it? Is that is it right there? Even? Okay. So we got that. Um, and then the last thing that I'm going to want you to do for Thursday is there's a little it's called lab management handout. It's on page, uh, you read 161, 2, and 3, and 4, and then you fill in the questions on page 181 and 182. All right, so you read 161 through 164, and then fill in the questions on 181 and 182. It's just a simple little thing to do. Okay, so that's what I'd like you to turn in for the lab. So the, what the uh, lab is, or should be anyway, should be um, the page, the page from your lab, or excuse me, from, from your, uh, your book, which is 262, all right? So you should fill in page 262. And then there's also a, um, a bit of reading to do, 161 through 164. And then fill in uh, pages 181 and 182, okay? And then that GPS sheet, I'll just take that. Well, I'll leave it in just because I, I like to keep a full list up there. But uh, And that's just to be turned in by the crew. But everything else should be turned in uh, by each individual. Each individual should do their own work. That's the general rule. Okay. 
Now, there's certain information that I want on every lab, and that's shown on page 161, okay? So that's the information that ought to be on every lab. All right, so are there any questions on that? All right, um, so what we're going to do here today, we're going to go over uh, leveling and determining elevations. Um, and then Thursday, we'll go out and do a level loop lab, okay? So Thursday will be the first time the crews are really functioning, you know, a little bit more like, like crews with like a uh, party chief and all that. So think about who should be the party chief, okay, for that lab. Um, and, you know, it... Uh, it really doesn't matter so much, you know, everyone's going to have a chance to do it. And if you got questions in your party chief, um, what you do, you just ask me and we line you out. I don't, I don't like getting labs screwed up out there. It's, it's not, it's no good, you know. So if you got any questions, just ask me, we'll line you out and you know, be sure you're getting things done properly. Okay. But, but we'll talk a little bit about that on, uh, on Thursday. All right. Okay. So we're going to look at uh, distance measuring here today or not distance. I'm sorry. Uh, levels. Okay. And also a little bit about uh, just general elevations. So leveling, what we do when we level is we're trying to find the, um, the elevation of points uh, generally above sea level, okay? So that's, the, uh, that's kind of the, our reference point for leveling. This is page 311, that's what it is. Okay. All right, and there's an old leveling crew right there. You all know what the umbrella's for? Yeah, it's for shade, that's true. To shade what or who? <laughs> yeah, if it was for a person, it'd be the party chief. I mean, that's kind of famous. Um, <laughs> but actually, it's for the instrument. Okay, you get the sun on those things, it throws them out of level because it, it heats them up differentially. So the umbrella is actually for the, the part of the uh, instrument. All the uh, people on the crew are all wearing their own umbrellas, I guess. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, now leveling, there's different ways to accomplish this. You can do it uh, trigonometrically. You can do it with what's called differential leveling. You can also use GPS equipment to get elevation. Now, what we're dealing with is uh, generally speaking a vertical line, okay, that goes down theoretically towards the center of the earth. Um, how do we figure out what a vertical line is when we're out in the field, do you suppose? Um, level won't quite do it. Level you set up horizontally, you know, it's level, but it doesn't shoot a vertical line down. Okay, it, it just shoots a flat line, I guess you'd say. Ah, okay, a plumb bob or something. Yeah, I mean, that's generally how you do that. And that is the official way that that's done. I mean, theoretically, that points into the center of the earth, but it, it varies a little bit. It depends on a few factors. It depends on the density of the earth's crust, because what's happening here is gravity is pulling the plumb bob down. And you get little gravitational variations depending on how dense the earth is under your feet and how dense it is over there and all this kind of stuff. So a vertical line theoretically goes right towards the center of the earth. The earth theoretically is a sphere, but it doesn't always work quite right. Sometimes, uh, you know, gravity will pull you off dead, dead, you know, a dead vertical line sometimes. So be aware of that. Also, the Earth is not a sphere. The Earth is actually more of an ellipsoid shape. It's not quite a, a perfect sphere. It, it's got different radii depending on where you are in the Earth. Okay, So these things always get a little complicated when you really start getting into them. The basics of surveying, just going out and shooting some shots for a small piece of land, you could pretty much assume everything's square and a, a flat plane and all that. But when you start doing bigger, uh, larger surveying or using more uh, sophisticated equipment, it, it gets a little trickier, okay? So what we do then, we're, we're, if we want a surface with one elevation above the earth, we consider that to be what's called a level surface, okay? And that would be something that is one consistent distance 
from the Earth. Okay. Now the Earth itself, of course, not only is it a little bit out of round, it also has mountain ranges and continents and oceans and places that go below sea level and all that. So it gets a little, you know, a little irregular, of course, in its shape. So generally, what we consider to be the Earth would be if it were a pure ocean, where that ocean would be. Okay, that's generally what we consider to be our where we reference from to get our elevations. Some ocean that covers the entire Earth. So when we survey, we use a horizontal plane, which is perpendicular to the vertical line. Okay. So that's just a little bit of background on, on how we're doing that. Now, again, if you're just surveying a little bit of a, a lot somewhere, horizontal plane works fine. It's pretty much equivalent to a level surface. But, but when they surveyed the, the, all the ground for I-5, they really couldn't make that assumption. You know, they had some error in that survey when they worked on it. Because it, it, you can't really approximate a line from uh, the north of Washington State down to San Diego as a straight, flat, horizontal line. It's not. It's curved. So you have to deal with that. Okay. So a datum, that's a level surface to which elevations are referred. Generally speaking, it's um, what's called mean sea level. Okay. So mean sea level is um, the average location of the ocean, the average height of the ocean, maybe might be a better way to say it. So mean sea level is usually what we're talking about here. Um, it's a reference that you can use for determining elevations. Now another definition of a datum which is kind of related is a series of a network of points that have known elevation that are tied together so they agree with each other. Okay. And there's different surveys that have been done to create different datums. Okay, so the Earth is modeled as an ellipsoid at mean sea level. Okay, the elevations are based on a vertical line from the point to the ellipsoid. Now, gravitational variations can affect the direction of the vertical lines, and that affects your elevations. Okay? So, if you use different datums, different times when these surveys were done, when, when the ability to measure some of these things was better or worse, you can get different elevations for the same point from two different datums. Okay? So, you need just to be aware of this. Um, if you're doing a survey and you're doing a survey based off of the, oh, uh, there's different datums that were used. If you're using the vertical datum of 1983 for your elevations and you find a point that's off the vertical datum from the 1929 survey, they could be quite a bit different, okay? Even though they're the same point on the ground, the elevations measured by different datums can be pretty different. So the main thing for now I'd like you to remember about this stuff is you've got to know which datum you're on when you're surveying. Because if you, if you uh, cross those up, you can get some real big errors in what you're trying to do. All right? So right now I'm kind of ahead of where we are. I'm on about page uh, 1109 or thereabouts. So uh, 1,109, that, um, that's the page I'm on right now. Okay, now there's three ways that we look at the Earth. The first is the Earth's surface, and that's the actual surface of the Earth with mountains and valleys and plains and plateaus and all that stuff. The second Earth model is called the ellipsoid, which is the best fit mathematical model. The Earth is a rotated ellipse with one radius at the equator and another at, uh, at the poles. Notice the polar radius is different than the equator radius. So the Earth is a little bit flattened in its true shape. The third model is the geoid, which is where they take the ellipsoid and modify it for those mass and density effects I was just talking about. You can think of the geoid as being if the Earth were entirely water, where the ocean would be. 
those different variations in density in the Earth's crust aren't, aren't going to make it a nice, smooth, perfect figure. There's going to be some bellies in it, some, some humps and things like that, okay? So there's three different Earths we can talk about. Now, when you do elevations, and this is this picture on page 1109, there's a, a kind of a representation of what we're talking about. If you're out there with GPS equipment, okay, now what GPS is going to give you is a latitude. So this is GPS, what it, what it gets you. Gets you a latitude, a longitude, and an ellipsoid height. Okay. So if there's the Earth, remember the uh, longitude goes around like segments of an orange, whereas the latitude are parallel lines that run across like that. Okay. So the latitudes are right there. The longitudes are right there. Okay. So this is what GPS reads out as. So those of you that had that GPS equipment and used it, I had you write down the latitude and longitude of the points because that's what GPS reads out in. It also gives you an ellipsoid height because it can create its own mathematical model of the ellipsoid, okay, which is a nice smooth curve that's a mathematical model of the Earth. You can program that into a GPS. See? So that's what a GPS will give you. Unfortunately, these, this can be very hard to use, this information. Okay, when we break out our levels and do common leveling, we don't get the ellipsoid height because we're dealing with this plumb line. So we get the geoid height, okay? That's what we get when we go out surveying. It's called an orthometric height, okay? A little different. And that won't just come right out of a GPS because it's such a complicated uh, geoid model that we have for the Earth, okay? So, so the GPS gives us ellipsoid height. The other thing it natively kicks out is latitude and longitude, which is fine. You know, if you're looking at the Earth, if you're looking at this sphere, this ellipsoid actually, it's kind of like a sphere. That's a good way to, to show where points are. But if you're out in the field trying to stake a water line or something, you don't want latitude and longitude. You want coordinates, x and y, okay, or actually y and x. So we're going to kind of touch on this throughout the class because this is kind of what's happening to surveying now. Um, when possible, people like to use GPS. They can't use it for everything, but it sure is fast. And, you know, it, you can just go out in the middle of nowhere and start doing GPS surveying. You can't really do that with the more traditional equipment. So there's this world where a surveyor typically has traditional equipment, you know, uh, transits, well actually these days there are theon lights and distance measures and levels, and that's used in locations where you can't use GPS. Um, then, they've, then they've got GPS, and they might also have like a laser scanner that just shoots out a cloud of laser beams that gets bounced back and can do real precise mapping from that. That's kind of what I understand to be the current state of the industry, okay? So we just need to be familiar with all these kinds of equipment. We'll, we'll touch on at least GPS a bit and, and the traditional stuff a bit. Now, you know, there's different times when you can use different equipment. Um, what, what, ideally, what do you want for good GPS readings, do you suppose? I mean, what, what are the factors you want for that? There you go, open sky, that's what you want. And, and see, that works quite well for construction, because normally the first step in construction is to knock everything down that's out there before you start constructing, right? So you got plain view of the sky, and that's great, okay? But now, but now in Oregon here, you get into trouble. You can't really do very good GPS surveying under the trees. It just don't work, because those little uh, radio signals from the satellites start bouncing around, and it just screws up your measurements. You couldn't do GPS surveying in downtown Manhattan and New York very well, again, because all the buildings. 
if you're trying to survey under an underpass, ain't no way you're going to use GPS. So, you know, there's different occasions that call for different types of equipment. Okay. So, y'all okay with what I'm saying there? And, that, and the fact that latitude and longitude don't really, they're hard to work with mathematically. I had you do that little calculation on a distance and an azimuth. If I give you a latitude and longitude, you can't do that without doing some pretty complex math. Okay? You need just a flat xy plane to do the math, okay? Simply, all right? So, okay? So what you get on a GPS is latitude and longitude, which are kind of breaking up this, the actually ellipsoid Earth into segments of an orange to, from pole to pole and parallel lines from the equator up and down. And also they kick out an ellipsoid height, which is measured directly up from that mathematical model of the Earth. That's what you get out of GPS. What a surveyor wants, or someone actually working with this stuff wants, is a YX coordinate and then a geoid height is what we work with. Okay? So we have to mess with the data sometimes to get what we want. Okay, so that's just a little bit on, on GPS and how it affects the work that we do. Okay, the other thing about GPS is it, it's not perfectly accurate. Well, nothing is, of course, but GPS usually has twice the vertical error than it does horizontal error. So GPS isn't always good enough with elevations to do certain types of work. Some work it can do fine, others, if you need really tight control, I'd be a little nervous about using GPS sometimes. Just depends what I'm trying to do. Okay. All right, now normally what we're, we're referencing our stuff to is average sea level, that's mean sea level, that's the reference for our datums. So you could say that Albany has an elevation of about 230 or 240 feet. That's above sea level, okay? Now, there's been surveys that have been done over the years. The two big ones were the National Geodetic Vertical Datum. So I'm back on the elevation stuff, okay? So the first big one was in 1929. Around then, I think they started it in 29. I'm not sure when they finished it, but they started it in 1929. And what they did, they started tying points together. So I'm on page 312, okay? All these benchmarks that are in the ground were shot and tied together, okay? And that was done in the United States. In 1988, they, they did another one and tied in uh, marks not only from America, but from Mexico and Canada. That was the North American vertical datum of 1988. Okay, these are different, these, you get different elevations off of these, so you want to be darn sure you know which datum you're working off of, or you can get yourself into some trouble, okay? So just be aware of that. Okay, so an elevation is a vertical distance from a datum. That's what it is. That's the official definition. Now, every time I want to know an elevation, I don't want to have to break out a GPS and warm it up and and not get very good data from it anyway if it's, you know, if I'm not getting good readings. I also sure as heck don't want to have to drive out to Newport and figure out what mean sea level is that day, okay? So what, what government agencies do is they set what are called benchmarks. These are points of known elevation and they're permanent points. They're brass caps is normally what they are because brass doesn't corrode very much. And they're marked. So the brass caps will be, I don't know, maybe a four inch diameter or something like that maybe a little less, they'll be set in concrete so they don't, they're not going anywhere. They'll have a mark on them. And then normally the elevations are recorded by some government agency. If you go to the county surveyor for Lynn County, they have a book of all the known benchmarks around here. So if I'm working on a project, you know, we're the heck out here in, uh, on Lynn Benton Community College, I happen to know there's some benchmarks on the south end of campus. I could go hit one of those, find that elevation and bring it over to my project, okay? I don't have to go 100 miles to go get in one of these, okay? So these are set all over town. They're maintained by different government agencies. The county surveyor usually keeps a record of all of them in the, in the county, okay? Now, if I've got a benchmark over here, and I, you know, I've done traditional surveying uh, 
we had to go about a more than a mile to get to a benchmark so we could do a survey over here for somebody's house for a floodplain study okay that took time if i'm going to working on a project I don't want to have to go a mile, even a mile every time I want an elevation on this project site. So what I'll do, I'll go out there once, I'll get this information and I'll survey back and I'll set my own temporary benchmark, TBM. Okay. Now a real benchmark is set by a government agency and it's a brass cap that everybody can access and use. It's an official government monument. A temporary benchmark is just something for me and my company working on my project. It's not maintained by a government agency. It's just set for a single project. It's set with a nail, spike in a tree, top of a fire hydrant, scratch on a concrete curb or something. It's just something in my project where I can get to it quick. So I don't have to be going a mile down the road to get an elevation, okay? So that's a temporary benchmark. So, first project I worked on, we had a network of these things running all through it. It was probably a hundred acre projects that we had, I don't know, five or six of these things where you get to them whenever we needed them. Okay. So, there's a term control. That means points that you know the elevation of that you can use to get the information you need. Vertical control means elevations. So, vertical control is a set of benchmarks and temporary benchmarks that you'd use to establish elevations of points of whatever you need out on your project. A curb height or a manhole height or whatever the heck it is, a foundation, you know, whatever you're using, you're, you're, you're building, okay? So you go to use your vertical control to measure your point. See? So what you need then is an instrument that shoots a flat line. The simplest thing is a P-gun. It's just a hand level. There's a little spirit level, like what you got in a carpenter's level right there that you can see. You sight through the instrument, it's got a crosshair and a bubble up there that you can track and make sure you're holding it level. Okay. Um, still used a bit by what are people that are called grade hops who help someone in a grade or, grade or, or road or whatever they're grading to the proper elevation. They use these a lot. But, you know, if you use them properly and get a good one, they're, they're good instruments. Okay. They don't magnify much, so you can't shoot very far with them, though. Okay. You can put an angle measuring device on that, and it becomes an abney level. So I'm on page 313 now. Okay, an abney shoots at a given uh, angle. So you could measure up hills and things with that, with an abney. Okay. A clinometer is kind of like an abney, but it's used... Uh, by people in forestry a bit to get the heights of trees. It measures a little differently, but it's same, kind of the same idea as an abney. Okay, a dumpy level is kind of when we get into actual engineering levels. It's an older school level. Long telescope has four leveling screws. It makes it kind of hard to set up. Sits usually on an old wood tripod, but it can be used for precision leveling if you can set them up properly. So there's a dumpy level. Long telescope. Um, here's the focus knob. There's the uh, leveling bubble right there. So kind of a long old school instrument. It's got four leveling screws. You can see two of them down there. Okay. Good instruments, but not used so much anymore. Okay, there's a dumpy level on a wooden tripod. There's that dumpy level there. Back in around the turn of the century, they were using those. That was the standard instrument then. Okay. Nowadays, we use automatic levels, newer style. Shorter telescopes, three leveling screws, not four. Newer tripod, they auto-correct on the setup. They're used to precision level also. So there's an automatic level. Short telescope, not that metal finish. Old dumpies are brass. The newer ones are like parkerized uh, brass, I think, or some sort of non-corroding metal. But nowadays we use these automatic levels. So if you're on a construction site, you'll probably see these if people are doing leveling. You might see some other things too, but that's, that's what the surveyors will be using, okay? So here's the level bubble right there. Um, there's a little bit of a mirror so you can see it. And then leveling screws here, only three leveling screws.
There it is on the tripod. Okay, contractors use a laser level. So they've got a rotating laser that kind of shoots a flat plane. They run out there with a rod with a target on it that they can move up and down. And that'll get, that'll kind of beep, I think, when they, when they're getting hit by the laser. Um, that's used by contractors to set grade, okay. Now the engineer will use this kind of level to set the stakes. The contractor will use a laser level to set the grade. So there's a laser level being set up right there. So it doesn't have so much a sighting device, it's just a rotating laser that kind of moves around. Okay. Now GPS can be used to find elevations too, but the vertical measurements have about twice as much air as the horizontal ones do. There's a GPS that we would use for surveying on a tripod and one on the right there to it for a staff. This, okay. We'll use those later in the term. Now, if you're using a level, you need a rod. So there's a rod. Remember these things measure in uh, tenths of feet. Okay. So the proper word for that is, is a rod. It's not the, the stick or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> People reference it that way sometimes, but it's called a rod. They're named after cities for some reason. I don't know why. That, that's called a Philadelphia rod there. Okay, now a level has a telescope, so it has a lens. It's got uh, crosshairs in it, and then it's got an eyepiece. So it's actually got two lenses and then an, uh, a reticule, which is just the crosshairs that you look while you sight the rod. Be a little careful with these things. Be sure that you're using the main central crosshair. They also have little stadium marks on there, they're called. Be sure you're reading this main line that cuts through the middle, okay, when you use it. Okay, now the resolving power of the telescope is the ability to show detail. That's how far apart you can discern two points as clearly being two separate points. And then you also have the magnification, okay? So the lenses are a big deal on this, on these things. Um, generally speaking, the companies that went into this to making these things are the old camera companies, okay? So Nikon makes surveying equipment because they're, they're good at making lenses. That's how they got into it, okay? Um, there's other camera companies that got into it too. Okay, now, when we're shooting these lines, they're not perfect. We've got a couple little problems here. The first one we've got is the Earth is a curved surface. So we shoot a level surface, this line of sight, but the Earth's curved, so we actually shoot a little high on the rod. The farther we are, the... Uh, the more air we've got, okay? So the farther away the rod is, the more air you've got on how you're shooting it, okay? Similarly, the atmosphere actually bends light waves down. That'll get us a second air. This one's high, we shoot high. This one we shoot low. It'd be real nice if they were about equal, then they'd just cancel out, but unfortunately they're not, so too bad, okay? Okay, so they don't. Now there's formulas that we can use to correct for those things. Um, and I show you the formulas on 314. Um, so lots of formulas there. In, in everyday surveying, you don't really use these things. You use proper <coughs> techniques, so you don't really have as much air, and you're fine, okay? So those formulas are there for your reference, but we're not gonna overkill that, because it's not that big a deal in everyday surveying, okay? You'd have to shoot an awful long line for those to really have a big effect on your work. Okay, so let's just go over the basics of leveling here. Now what a level does is it shoots a flat line, okay? That's its purpose. Okay. So, what we do first here is we set up the tripod. Okay. <coughs> All right, when I set up a tripod, it really doesn't matter what point I set up on when I'm using a level. 
So to put it anywhere, I want to start with this plate here being pretty much uh, level to start with. That makes it easier to set up the instrument, okay? There we go. And look up on the horizon if you want to check that. There we go. It's better. It's better yet. Okay. Now when you set these up, who do you set them up for? The tallest person on the crew or the shortest person on the crew? It's for the shortest, yeah, because it's a lot easier to bend over and look through a telescope than it is to stand on your toes and try and look for something. It gets really old after a while. So set it up for the shortest person who's going to be reading it, okay? Remember that. Also, keep an eye on what you're doing here, because we look all different directions. So if I got this thing set up, and I've got a few points here that I'm going to shoot. Sometimes we're all focused on looking one direction. Are we going to get into trouble on that one? Set up for your highest point, okay? <laughs> Sometimes I've gotten so focused. That happened to me once. I was just kind of running around doing this job, and I was a little too focused back here, and I set the dang thing up, and I looked ahead, and I was looking right in the dirt. I wasn't able to see my front, front point. So um, just be sure you're setting it up for the highest point. All right, now, these things got leveling screws on them. And I can move these leveling screws. The general rule is the bubble follows your left thumb. And you, um, you twist your two thumbs in opposite directions so these things don't bind up on you. You'll have ample time to practice that. So I'm going to turn this a bit till I get that bubble on this uh, bullseye to go right in the middle. And the nice thing about these automatic levels, which makes it a little easier to set up the dumpy levels, they don't have to make it perfect. I can just get close, I can tap it. These lenses hang on wires. If I tap it, it ensures they hang plumb. Okay. So now I'm shooting level with that thing. Okay, and I set up that instrument wherever the heck I want, where I can see both points I'm going to shoot. And then I set up the rod. The rod has a back side here that's numbered in a very odd fashion. So be sure you're showing the front side to the crew. The back side has kind of just a blank piece of wood there on the bottom. That's how you can tell the difference. Okay, see that blank wood down there, whereas the front does not. So if you're on the rod, be sure you're showing the front of the rod to the crew. Um, hold it plumb, okay? Um, so you can let go of it every now and again. It ought to stay pretty, pretty uh, still. If you're holding it about plumb, you can kind of keep an eye on it. Now, um, if you're not, and you have actually a line in this telescope that will tell you whether the person on the rod is holding it plumb. So if they're not, just tell them what to do. Okay? You kind of have to communicate clearly out there. Okay? Don't, don't have a conversation with them. Tell them what to do in a simple way. Plumb up like that. Don't go like that because they might be a long distance away. Um, you know, stuff like that. Remember that when you're pointing things to people. If you want them to go left, don't tell them to go left because they're, they're pointing a different direction than you, right? So which way is left from your perspective? Is it, is it that way or is it that way? If I want someone to go to my left, I go like this. <laughs> go. <laughs> okay, that makes it real clear, okay? It's unambiguous. Don't go like that. <laughs> you know, very clear, open, long distance communication, clear gestures, a loud voice, okay? Okay, so we're going to set this thing up on a point, and then we're going to and we're going to sight that. Now that's a benchmark there, and that elevation, as I'm projecting there, is 100 feet. And what I'm going to do now that rod isn't anywhere near set up right, but you know I don't want to spend too much time dealing with that. But you know I'd set it, I get it as plumb as I could when I'm holding it, of course, and then I'm going to sight it. And I'll focus it a bit so I can see what the heck I'm looking at. And I'm looking at just about five feet flat, okay? So, I know that the benchmark that this rod is sitting on, right there, is 100 feet above sea level. That's the benchmark. EL means elevation. I'm reading five feet on the rod. 
So what's the elevation of that line that I'm shooting? One oh five? We good? Pretty good, huh? Okay. Now this telescope is designed to shoot a flat line. So anywhere I look at this thing now, I am looking at 105 feet. Got it? Because this thing's designed to shoot flat. Anywhere I look is 105 feet. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to, so now I know the elevation of the telescope. It's 105. <coughs> okay, I don't need that rod anymore because I know my elevation. So this point on the ground is 100. The telescope's 105. I'm going to come on over here and figure out this point. So now I've moved the rod, and I'm shooting in this point. And what I'm shooting on that point is four feet on that rod. Okay, I'm looking at four feet. So this is 105.00 wherever I look, and I'm shooting four feet. How high is the point on the ground? What's that? Oops. So I was at 100 even, I went up 5, that got me to 105, now I'm at 105 and I'm shooting 4, so where am I at? 101, right? Because I'm shooting down now, I mean I'm, I'm above the point on the ground, so the point on the ground right there is 101. So what's referred to as the HI, which is the height of the instrument, I add the rod shot to get. That's 105. Then I'm at 105, and I subtract the rod shot okay, to get the next elevation, and that's 101. So when I look back, that's called a back sight, sometimes called a plus sight. And when I look ahead, that's called a foresight, sometimes called a minus sight. Got it? So, so that's how I do that. I'm on page 321 now. Any uh, questions on that? All right. All right. Um, now, let's see. Tell you what, why don't we just take five minutes here, get with your crew and figure out who is going to be your party chief on Thursday, because I'd like to know that. And um, and let's, we can just take a quick break here, not real long, because we burned up time on that little drill, and I don't want to, you know, I want to be sure we get through all this stuff. So, um, so just five minutes here, okay?